make an announcement regarding a program in Bennington called Help a Pet. Being on All Species Day, I guess it's very um, appropriate that a program in town for our, uh, cats and dogs to receive medical care for minor injuries or needs takes place on the first Sunday of every month between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. at First Baptist Church, which is down here on East Main Street, just about a couple of blocks. It's restricted to families who are either homeless or receiving public assistance, three squares, Medicaid, or fuel assistance. The treatment will include minor illness, wounds, injuries, wellness, exams, vaccinations, and you just, your animals must be on a leash in a safe container if it's a cat. And that's sponsored by the Pets of the Homeless and Concerned Citizens and George Glansberg Veterinary. On All Species Day, Fidel Marino and his crew were able to invite a very special person here today. Our guest today is an author, she's an attorney, she asked me not to let you know her entire educational background because it's very, very impressive, and she asked me not to even go through that, but trust me, the person we have speaking today knows exactly why we're all here today and why we're here and what we're looking at is so important. There's an event this evening at Southern Vermont College at 6 p.m. to end today's event, and there are tickets available at the Guru booth right over there. Um, the tickets for the dinner and the guest speaker um, take place at 6. There are a few tickets here now. If there are any tickets left this evening, they'll be available up at Southern Vermont College. Now, I'd like to introduce Corinna Gore. Corinna is the daughter of former Vice President Al Gore. She is here today to talk on integrity in the earth and valuing where we come from to protect what we love. She is now the director of the Center of Earth Ethics at Union Theological Seminary down in New York City. Everybody, please join me in welcoming our very special guest, Corinna Gore. Thank you so much, John, uh, for that very warm introduction, and thank you, Bennington, thank you, Vermont, for this warm welcome. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you, Fidel, for inviting me and for organizing this, and uh, let's hear it for the Hanging Chad. This is by far the best experience that I've had with Hanging Chad. And it really goes to show there's a rainbow. Um, a silver lining and a rainbow, and uh, I love that music, thank you. So tonight I'm going to talk, and I hope everyone comes, I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, valuing where we come from to protect what we love. And by that, I really mean that place is important, roots are important. We work a lot on climate change, where I work at the Center for Earth Ethics, and we think and talk about future generations because that is so important as a moral dimension of climate change. But I also want to think about previous generations and ancestors and the way of life that was closer to the land and the cycles and the elements. And we all come from people and cultures that protected and cared for this beautiful earth and all species in a way that can give us strength today. We live in a time of change, whether you think of it as crossroads or crisis or a time of prophecy. We certainly live now in a time where we have climate impacts here now. We've heard about all the pollution going into the air and if you look up and, and it seems limitless, this beautiful blue sky, and then you think how it looks from outer space and the blue planet in that black, it is just important to pay attention, I think, just to pay attention and to honor 
who we are and who all species are in this beautiful ecosystem that is so much more fragile than many of us have realized. In Paris, in December, there was this climate treaty signed. 169 nations agreed that we can't live on fossil fuel forever and that we have to make the change to renewable energy. But we've all seen since then that climate impacts are coming faster. The ice sheets are melting much faster than people thought. We've had the hottest years on record for the past three years. There are people who are suffering from the extreme droughts and heat waves and uh, the harsher rains and floods. And sometimes I think what it's like for those people when they hear people talking about the threshold that we, we need to prevent ourselves from crossing. We can't get the threshold where climate change is too much. For them, if they've already had the loss of their homes, uh, the loss of their crops and ecosystems, we will pass that, that threshold. And I also today just want to think about what it's like for other species during this time. And we've heard that there is, we're in the midst of the sixth great extinction, that many species are at risk of, of extinction, many that we haven't even discovered. And we also have heard that there was a recent study in 2011 in Science Magazine that talked about the migration to the poles, that species are actually migrating to the poles at a rate of 20 centimeters per hour for the past 40 years. And they've traced that, and, and it will keep going that way, up mountains, up altitudes, and also towards the poles. We've heard about the coral reefs and the bleaching of the coral coral reefs where the algae lets go and all of the all of the species that live within those ecosystems have already let go much faster than people thought. And there was a story that I read about storks, white storks, that are now not migrating from Europe to Africa as they've always done because they just feed on the trash that is along the coastline there. To me that seems very significant. And when, when I read I read a, several versions of that story, and in one magazine they said, well, it's not all bad news for the storks because they're having more babies and they're, they're, they have more food, but that isn't all that we value. We value the beautiful cycles that we're all interdependent and connected to each other in this earth. And as we, as, as human beings, are part of that web of life. I also want to mention that there's so much that we can learn from these other species and trees in particular, the underground roots and networks that we've been, dis people have been discovering that, that nourish each other, that bigger trees are caring for weaker and smaller and younger trees. And it is that network of roots that I think about when I, when I come here and I see this beautiful community and talking with people who are also standing up against pipelines for fracked gas, who are also working how they can to protect their communities and cultures, to really teach young people how we take care of this earth, how we take care of each other. It's so beautiful and we can connect our roots and become stronger together. That's what it's gonna take. We know that there are, there are even now, people wanting to extract more, burn more, get more, turn everything that we can into production, consumption, profits. And what, what the roots that we're building together will resist that. I'm very proud to be here with my, my dear friends and colleagues from the Center for Earth Ethics, Mandahi, Geraldine, Donzaki, CA. They're here, they're, here from, um, they're here from Mexico, keepers of wisdom of the Otami people and the, uh, the Maya, the Mapuche, and it, we work together. We work together at the Center for Earth Ethics where we believe that climate change and the ecological crisis is about, it is about science and it is about economics, but it's about much more than that too. It's just, it's just falling a little bit. <laughs> it's okay. It's, okay. It's also about belief systems. And one of the things that we were able to do, we were at a seminary, so we do a lot of interfaith dialogue. And it's beautiful when you, when you compare religious belief systems and you can see that we can learn a lot from differences as well as from similarities. 
we're very proud that at the Center for Earth Ethics we have on our staff and fellows and advisory board people who come from Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, and also from the Mohawk, the Onondaga, Diné, Lakota, and Otami, Mapuche, and Maya. We're so, it's so important to draw from these wisdom and faith traditions as we move forward. And there's one thing in particular that I find that there's a difference about, and that is the place of human beings compared to the rest of species on Earth. And in many, in, in the Judeo-Christian heritage, there is a beautiful tradition of talking about the gift from God, that, that uh, creation was given to mankind from God to protect and care for. And that is an important tradition. And Pope Francis has written beautifully and spoken beautifully on this. But I also think it's important to listen to the people from the traditions that uh, were really the, the essence of which was captured well by Chief Seattle when he said that the earth doesn't belong to us, we belong to the earth. And I believe that we should think about that and all the other species that we're connected to that we can help care for and thrive and flourish together on this wonderful Earth Day, wonderful All Species Day. Thank you so much for being here with me. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much, Corinna. And uh, remember, uh, a full discussion this evening is at 6 p.m. at Southern Vermont College, and right where you can see waving some tickets right over there in front of the, the Guru booth. If you'd like to get some tickets, uh, there's dinner and discussion this evening at 6 p.m. Southern Vermont College. Coming up next, and I think they've been very patient in waiting to set up, so it's going to take a few minutes, is Rebel Alliance, a local group, and it's a reggae-infused jam rock. So sit tight, some great entertainment coming up. They'll be entertaining us for about an hour, and I say in about 10, 15 minutes. Thanks again. <laughs>